Welcome to the February edition of the Grafana Agent Community Call. Today we have Paul in here, who's an engineer on the Grafana Agent team, and he's going to talk to us about tracing deployments. I'll let him introduce it further. Um, so, Paul, and take it away. Hello. Uh, thank you, Eric. So, yeah, uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, tracing load balancing traces across multiple agent instances, both in static mode and in flow, and how static mode and flow are different and how flow can give you more options. Um, and also after that, we can go into some pitfalls. Um, so uh, yeah, there are some edge cases with traces where people really need to be careful that that, for example, tell sampling samples correctly. Um, um, yeah, otherwise it's very easy to configure a tell sampler and then later realize that it actually sampled the tracing correctly because the load balancing wasn't set up properly. And then we can look into some limitations uh, where really even the best load balancing strategies uh, can't really help us right now uh, with the collector. Um, you know the OD, um, uh, the OD agent components for traces come from the uh, Open Telemetry collector. So any limitations of the agent in this case would be limitations of the collector. Uh, yeah, and 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 so forth. So yeah, let's um, begin. I prepared some slides. So let me share my screen. Okay. okay, so this is just, um, uh, let's start with static mode load balancing. Mm. But I'm just sharing one tab. How can I, how can I share the whole window? One second. Oh yeah, okay, I found it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I want to jump back and forth uh, between tabs. So, okay, so let's start with static mode. Uh, this is maybe what some people who have used agent uh, in the past are familiar with. Uh, how is uh, How are traces ingested uh, and load balanced in static mode? Um, so on the left here, we have uh, the application which sends the traces, the instrumented application. And it's instrumented with open telemetry because the Grafana Tempo is open telemetry native. The agent ingests and sends uh, traces in the OTOP format. Um, and really here we have a cluster of agents uh, which are uh, receiving via open telemetry receivers uh, spans. So that's the first step. Uh, the second step is all those agents will then send those spans to each other. So th they will hash the trace ID normally, and they operate sort of as a hash ring. So um different uh, spans will go to different agents depending on the trace id and the goal of this is to make sure uh spans for a certain trace id are gener uh, are processed by the same agent right so if a trace has let's say two spans both of these two spans have to go to the same agent we don't want to have one span for that trace ID going to one agent another going to another agent so that that is what makes uh, load balancing tricky the reason why we need to do that sort of thing is because if you want to do tail sampling for example uh, the tail sampling just won't really work uh, if it doesn't have the whole trace um, uh, yeah, so for example, you might have a rate limiter step in your tail sampler where you want to uh, limit the amount of spans uh, for a certain trace and you limit that to 50. Obviously, the agent doing the tail sampler 
we will limit those to 50, but if the same trace goes to also another agent, then that will also do another limiting of 50, and then your limit won't actually be 50, it will just be, uh, you know, something greater than that. So, uh, so this is the second stage where agents distribute the work amongst each other, then they sample it uh, in the third stage, and then they send it to the temple. And this is configured in static mode, via this load balancing uh, config option. So the, right now we are looking at the traces config of static mode. And again, this is the load balancing option. It's a little bit, uh, it's, in, it's an interesting configuration because it's almost exactly the same as the collector one. It's almost exactly the same as the open telemetry collector load balancer but it has a receiver port and and that is the port on which agents receive spans from other agents All right so in here uh this agent will receive let's say from this agent uh on that port that's something that the collector doesn't have um right so let's go to flow so actually does anybody have any questions so far? Okay. Um, there will be time for questions after, after the presentation. But let's go to Flow. So, uh, firstly, I should say Flow can do exactly the same thing that the static mode does. Um, if you want to configure your Flow agent to do what static mode does, you can, no problem. Uh, but it's not how most people do load balancing in the collector uh, and I would argue you probably should use flow a little differently from how static mode does it. So what does flow do? Uh, I mean what can you do with flow that I would recommend? I would recommend splitting uh, into two uh, agent mm, clusters if you will. So on the left we have the load balancing agents, which are the ones running the load balancing exporter. On the right, we have the tail sampling agents. And the reason why you want to do that is to scale uh, the different sets of agents independently of each other. So if you need a bigger set of uh, tail sampling agents, then you can scale that without impacting the load balancing agents uh, too much. Um, and uh, so forth. And I think it's also just kind of, you know, um, it's not a, it's a simple thing to configure. It adds maybe a little bit extra configuration, but it's, um, I think, simpler to reason about. Uh, you get more separation of responsibilities. Okay, so, uh, yeah, again, you can configure flow to do exactly what static mode does if you enjoy it. Uh, you know, there are benefits to it. So, uh, you know, um, it, it's up to you what you like. Are there any questions about this part as well? Okay, so um, let's go to the interesting part, which is the actual gotchas. And th th there are quite a few of them. And again, uh, this is the same with the collector the when we talk about any um um uh hard things to do with uh the agent in terms of tail sampling traces it's basically the same with the collector it also can be a little bit uh, difficult to tell sample um and well balance in a reliable way in a scalable way so um okay so First of all, uh, let's say let's say you're configuring. Um, let's say you want to uh, uh, scale the number of sampling agents. So these agents here on the right, uh, you want to increase uh, or decrease the number of agents that you have there. So. If you go back to the documentation for the load balancer, um, 
but this time for the flow load balancer, uh, you see that the load balancer can accept a resolver. Uh, that's how it fi you find the, the agents to load balance to. And an issue with the resolver is that when you have all these agents on the left side, while the number of agents on the right side is changing, the numbers on the left might have a differing view of the agents on the right. So one agent here will think there are five agents here on the right, and another one will think there are four because it just didn't get updated yet, right? So you really want to minimize um, that situation. So I would say probably you shouldn't be scaling too much. Uh, try to minimize the amount of time um, that you spend scaling. And also, if you're on Kubernetes, there is a Kubernetes resolver, which you can use. It's a very quick resolver because it doesn't do any polling. There's no polling interval. The agents get notified by Kubernetes whenever uh, a new agent pod came up. So um, the chances of uh, these agents on the left having a deep uh, or inconsistent views of the agents on the right are, are much lower. Um, but you know, otherwise you have to use usually a DNS resolver. And as you can see, there is a resolver timeout here, sorry, the resolver interval here. Um, which is set to five seconds. So there's a chance that if you use the uh, five second interval in those five seconds, uh, different agents will be exporting a little differently. And be, and uh, in the case of a tail sampler, a span for a given trace may no longer be going to the same tail sampling agent. Um, right. Um, another problem is that um let's say you are scaling the agents on the right uh, but they still have unfinished sampling right so uh I, I think in this case um i think that the sampling might end up being a bit incorrect as well so ideally we should we should have a situation uh, in the collectors where when we scale uh, we probably want to let those agents finish sampling uh, before shutting them down or before allocating that trace ID to another agent. And that still doesn't exist yet. It would be pretty great in my opinion if it does. Uh, but yeah, that, that's just something we need to do. So these are limitations which are in the collector, in the agent, uh, and hopefully things will get better. I'm optimistic that uh, we'll fix this uh, soon, but at the moment, uh, that's the current state first. So just need, I don't think this is a showstopper for most people, but it's just something to be mindful of. So you, when you are scaling, keep in mind, you don't just scale all the time, just scale more rarely, right? Um, uh, I've even heard of people say that they're only scaling up. They, they don't even scale down, they just scale up. And that can work. If it works for you, then great, because uh, you, you, that way you're also minimizing the amount of times you're scaling, right? So it, it also helps keep things uh, in a consistent state. So those are the two main uh, uh, issues that you need to be aware of. Um, now, let's go into some more advanced cases. Uh, we added a section to the auto co exporter load balancing uh, docs, uh, which is, uh, I think, very helpful in helping you choose a load balancing strategy. Uh, and here we explain how you can couple the load balancing exporter with other components. Um, and those are all stateful components. So here we have the tail sampling, span metrics, service graph. Uh, well, actually, sorry, they're not all stateful. Um, but tail sampling is. 
uh, and um, and surface graph is also stateful. So when I what, what do I mean by stateful? Uh, I mean that they need to persist some amount of information in order to make a decision in order to output something right so it's not like they just get some information and evaluate and up, output straight away uh, they need to ingest some spans leave them on in memory for a while uh, then wait wait for some more spans uh, wait for some timeout or something like that and then make a decision based on that so um uh, that's certainly what the tail sampling does again if you want to uh, configure a tail sampler uh um you need a load balancer with the routing key of trace id uh, for the same reason i mentioned so that spans from the same trace go to the same agent that's what this routing key of trace id means it means that um you get some consistency in what agent processes what trace ID. Um, now, we already talked too much about the sampling, so let's go into span metrics. Span metrics is a way to generate metrics from spans. Those are so called red metrics, she stands for ra uh, rate, error, and duration. So um, so you get three different types of metrics, the rate metrics, the error metrics, and the duration metrics. And um, this, I think, uh, it's not really a, I don't think it's really a stateful component. Um, so the important thing to know about this component, spawn metrics component, is that to be accurate, it needs to go before tail sampling. Um, so why is this? It's because if you already sample some of the spans, if, uh, in other words, if you already removed part of the spans, then the span metrics uh, component just wouldn't wouldn't have enough information to work with, right? Um, you know, it, it might be okay if you sample some useless spans, like maybe you have a health check service generating spans and you don't want span metrics for that health check service go ahead uh, you know sample them out no worries um, but if you have a, a real service and you want to generate span metrics for it uh, definitely do not sample uh, spans before the span metrics uh, can do its job um right so um yeah i think that's the most important thing uh for spawn metrics uh the, also uh if, if you read the docs uh, i'm not going to go into every single thing that's in the docs uh there, there will be links under the description below <laughs> uh but um uh, basically with with spawn metrics you, you might have uh different you know, the service ID is a label in the metric. And and so different agents might produce identical metrics, I mean, identical metric series, because they'll be, although they'll be getting the uh, same, um, well, okay, uh, let me start from a little far, right? So let's say you configure load balancing with the trace ID. Different um, agents will process different trace IDs, but they may have the same service name in those different trace IDs. And that means they will produce identical metrics because the service uh, name is part of the spawn metrics uh, labels. So this will generate a, a, an error if you remote write the metrics because uh, you try sending overlapping, uh, you know, samples for the same series, so uh, the backend database will get confused because at one point you say the value is one, and uh, then the value might be uh, well. 
uh, you know, something else. So what you want to do to make those uh, series unique is put a collector ID um, label on your spawn matrix. Uh, that will generate, um, obviously, more cardinality. The more the agent instances, the, more, the bigger the cardinality. Uh, but you can actually get around the cardinality problem. There is a documentation page in the application observability section, uh, which can guide you to using a collector ID uh, label with uh, adaptive metrics. Adaptive metrics is a way to automatically aggregate all those spawn metrics from different collector IDs. So uh, then you you wouldn't incur extra costs uh, for for the different, uh, you know, for, for the increase in cardinality. Yeah, so I can't explain every single thing in simple terms. So I hope that this is clear enough. Uh, you can read the docs for more information. It's uh, it's it's all in there, and this is just uh, an overview. Right. So let's go to service graph. A um, service graph is very similar to spawn metrics because in order for it to work, you also uh, want to generate service graphs uh, before any sort of tail sampling or any other sampling, really. So, uh, yeah, it has similar limitations. And again, you can use a collector ID label because service graphs, uh, the service graph component generates metrics. So both the span metrics component and the service graph component, they both generate metrics. Um, right. So this collector ID label will just go to the service graph metrics in here. OK, so I talked a lot about uh, the load balancing exporter, but actually you don't even have to use the load balancing exporter sometimes. If you don't do any um, tail sampling, for example, you may not need to use it. Uh, for example, if you choose to sample traces using a non-stateful component like Um, let me. There should be a probabilistic. Yeah, okay. This one. So, this probabilistic sampler, um, it just samples traces, uh, so it spans at random. So, um, Oh yeah, actually, yeah, it samples uh, traces. So yeah, as long as every agent has the same hash seed, then uh, you can just sample uh, perfectly fine without any low balancing exporters. Okay, so I think I already mentioned the main points. Are there any questions about anything? Yeah, thanks, Paul. Um, yeah, one one question I had is, are there other you know components not that we need like a deep overview of, but just that would be useful for doing trace sampling in general, or just you know trace telemetry in general? Yeah, yeah, uh, I'd say so. So, probabilistic sampler is a useful one. If you can do sampling just based on that, I would say go for it. Um, certainly, it's possible. You could also do head-based sampling instead of uh, tail-based sampling, which is, um, I'm not a big expert on this, but I think you can use, for example, a Jaeger remote sampling extension. I think your the instrumented application would connect to this and then um, pull the remote sampling uh, uh, config, 
and I think it will choose to create or not create a trace uh, based on that, but I'm not entirely sure how that works, to be honest. Um, yeah, so you could use that. You could also use, generally you could use anything in hotel call. Uh, well, sorry, not anything, uh, but as a, again, tracing uh, in Grafana uh, products is open telemetry native. So for uh, uh, tracing pipelines, I would say you need to use hotel call components generally, but not every hotel call component will work with uh, traces, right? There are some that just work for metrics and so on, so read docs. But if you're wondering what you can do with traces, then it's hotel call. And the other one that you might need to use a lot is the transform processor, which gives you a way to rename resource attributes, add resource attributes, um, and, and so on. So really, we could just work a lot with attributes. So I think, oh yeah, okay. Uh, the uh, Kubernetes attributes one is interesting. The filter one is interesting, um, but two. So let's go through these as well. Uh, so the transform one, as I said, it's for uh, mostly just working with attributes, adding them, removing them, modifying them, and so on. You could also promote a, a span attribute to resource attribute and so on. Uh, Kubernetes attributes, this can enrich a um, um, your uh, resource, your your resource attributes with extra Kubernetes attributes, like the Kubernetes namespace that you're running on and, and so forth. The filter one can, uh, I believe this one will um, just remove spans. So it will, it will just drop certain spans based on your filter. So this is also a good thing to do if you, want to avoid the Intel sampling. Let's say you have, again, a health check service generating spans, then you can filter out all those spans, right? No need using the auto call processor filter. There's no need for a tail sampler in this case. And the batch processor is a very popular uh, processor. Um, I, probably most pipelines have this. It can bundle up um, telemetry, not just traces, but also logs and metrics uh, in a batch so that then you could uh, send it over to the database uh, in a bigger batch rather than a smaller batch. And this typically, should go after any sort of sampling because you don't want to be spending all that time making a batch only for the tail sampler or some other sampler to sample out half of the things in the batch, right? So uh, you want the batching to be at the very end of the pipeline after any sort of filtering or sampling. Yeah, any other questions? No other questions. I will mention one thing, but um, before I do, if there are any questions, uh, fire them in the in the chat or raise hand. And last call for those. Well, I, I do want to mention. Oh, oh, we do have a question. Um, we've got a question that says, "I have a question about using tempo in multi-tenant mode. I want to set the Xscope org ID by the hotel auth headers component, but it can only get the value from context. There is an option for set header value from attributes." Hmm. Okay, let's go to that component. That's an interesting question. So let's see, it's this one of headers.
Yeah, I see what you mean. Is from attributes new ish? It might not have existed when we first implemented this. Yeah, let me see um, if that exists in the collector. Sounds, sounds like you should make an issue so we can track it and get that implemented for you. Because it, if it exists upstream, um, then we should have it in the agent. Yeah, for sure. For sure, good question. Um, I was checking that. What I, what I did want to uh, mention is if you are working in static mode traces today, we are actively uh, doing development to, to create converter support. We do have that from static to flow mode, but not for traces yet. Um, so we are excited to get that out the door, but it's under development. So no promises on timeline, but we're looking forward uh, to that to make it easy to jump from static to flow mode to take advantage of the uh, more flexible and uh, additional features. Did you find Paul in any? Hmm. Yeah, so I, where was that? Yeah, I think we have the same features as the collector. Mm, yeah, I think it's just the missing feature. Um, and I think I was wondering about the same thing actually <laughs> recently. It, it does sound like a useful thing to, to have. Uh, and yeah, I can I can double check after the coin raise an issue, but uh, I, I do think that it makes sense to uh, to have such a feature. I, I don't know how urgent it is, but it, I think it makes sense. If I understand correctly, this is mostly for self-hosted um, tempo instance where you might want to include that header because I think normally on Grafana Cloud, there's a gateway which inserts that header, but in a self-hosted uh, tempo or Mimir, uh, you kind of have to insert the header yourself because there's no gateway. So that's why it mostly works with headers, uh, this token of headers, just because the agent was designed in a way to take the header from the into from the incoming connection and put a similar header on the outgoing connection. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, the, there was no immediate need for getting the header from uh, attribute inside the telemetry itself. Yeah, I'll double check this and I'll raise an issue. Thanks for raising it. Okay, any other questions? All right, unless there's anything else you want to you want to close us out here, Pollen, but uh... I think that's everything and nice work. Thanks very much. Uh, yeah, that's all for me. I uh, uh, like to emphasize again, this is uh, a very uh, busy area of work, right? We're constantly making improvements. So uh, the main thing to take away from this meeting is really the links in the docs <laughs> where you could find further uh for the improvements and uh yeah uh, happy sampling and happy trace ingestion <laughs> thank you not so far all right thanks paul and thanks everyone and we will see you next month